a new year. We had our, our immediate family Christmas on New Year's because of uh, being the, the off year for the regular Christmas day. I heard some of the grandchildren talking about how old they would be next year. So if you're 12 and you say, I'm going to be 14 next year, that's, that's a pretty good deal, right? How about if you're 50? You don't do that, right? <laughs> you try not to. Anyway, I thought of that song, This Is The Day, which is on, it's 121 in your blue books. And instead of singing, This Is The Day, I would like to sing, This Is The Year. Can we change that? It's not the scripture, so it's just a song, right? So let's sing that and inject, This Is The, day, this is the Year, instead of This Is The Day. This is the year, this is the year that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the year that the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the year, this is the year that the Lord hath made. Give you a little rundown of the service this morning. We, after the announcements and worship time and the prayer for missions and the uh, Sunday school offering, we'd like to hand out a slate for this coming year and I'd like to thank you ahead of time for being a part of that. And then after that, I'd like to have prayer for the EBI students, those that there's five going from here. Um, Rachel will be, will be returning, but the rest will be going for, I believe, one semester. And uh, have prayer for them, and then have a scripture reading, and then John will bring the message. And I tell you all that so you don't let me forget what order that was in. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We realize that without you being the God of creation, the God of care, the one that has created each one of us in a very unique way, as well as our even local body of believers in a unique way, that um, we pray that we would bring you honor and glory this morning by the words that we sing, by the things that we say to each other and encourage each other in the faith. I pray that you would guide us and direct us in all of that. Thank you for students that are going to learn more about you and how to relate to you, and I pray that you would bless that time as well, that you would guide us and direct us this morning. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Take any announcements you might have. We have a portable mic. And we welcome those that are listening from home or watching from home to be a part of this service as well. There are no announcements. We will have Verlin lead us in our time of worship. So Verlin. Good morning. Welcome to a new year. I, uh, I hope you're ready to sing this morning. This first song is one that I'm not even sure where I heard it, but the beginning of last week, uh, I heard this song, and it flat out retched out and grabbed me, and I, it, it wouldn't let me go. And so I thought, we're going to have to sing that song on Sunday morning. And so then I took that and then based the rest of my songs around it. Uh, as you'll notice, uh, the theme of our singing this morning has to do with sunlight. So I was hoping the sun would be shining this morning, but, but it's not. So, well, we know that it's shining, it's just not shining through the clouds. So uh, this first one is, I, I hope that enough of you know it so I don't have to sing a solo. Uh, 
I forgot to. Jeff, when, I, when we start singing, can you hit the mute button on the pulpit mic for me? Thank you. <clears throat> well, yeah, exactly. Okay, first song is called Sunlight. And this song, uh, like I said, it, uh, it's really not that hard. Uh, I hope that enough of you know it. That, uh, and it, uh, it's a little more upbeat. Uh, so uh, here we go. I wandered in the shades of... Very good. All right, the next one is Heavenly Sunlight. <clears throat>
All right, the next one is, there is sunshine in my soul today. <clears throat> there is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today, a carol to my King. And Jesus, listening, hear me hear the songs I cannot sing. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine. When the peaceful, happy moments roll, when Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today, for when my Lord is near, for a dove of peace sings in my heart, the flowers of grace appear. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today, and hope and praise and love for blessings which he gives me now. For joys is laid up above. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. All right, and the last one, if we have all this sunshine around us, then uh, Jesus wants us to be a sunbeam. I know that, uh, I guess you would consider this more of a children's song, but uh, each and one of us, every one of us is, is called to reflect Jesus, and so uh, we'll be a sunbeam for him. <clears throat> Jesus wants me for a sunbeam to shine for him each day. In every way try to please him at home, at school, at play. A sunbeam, a sunbeam. Jesus wants me for a sunbeam, a sunbeam. A sunbeam, I'll be a sunbeam for him. Jesus wants me to be loving and kind to all I see, showing how pleasant and happy his little one can be. A sunbeam, a sunbeam. Jesus wants me for a sunbeam, a sunbeam, a sunbeam. I'll be a sunbeam for him. I will ask Jesus to help me to keep my heart from sin. 
ever reflecting his goodness and always shine for him. A sunbeam, a sunbeam, Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. A sunbeam, a sunbeam, I'll be a sunbeam for him. I'll be a sunbeam for Jesus, I can if I but try. Serving him moment by moment, then live for him on high. A sunbeam, a sunbeam, Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. A sunbeam, a sunbeam, I'll be a sunbeam for him. thinking about it when the sun shines through those the frost that we have on the trees it'll be a trillion times a trillion sparkles and and beyond so it'll be absolutely beautiful thank you Verlin for reminding us and thank you for singing out I would like to pray for the the offerings this morning and the offering today is for missions and also the Sunday school offering today is for widows in our congregation and I'd like to have a word of prayer for both of those. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for this new year and for guiding us and directing us the past year. And pray that you would continue to do that this year and in this one area of our giving. I pray that you would guide us and give us open hands and hearts to share with those that we are able to share with. I pray that for the mission offering, that it would go to, to where it is needed where it is um, being used to further the gospel of Jesus Christ in the areas uh, where it goes to, that you would bless this offering, that you would bless the offering for our sisters, that you would guide and direct that offering as well, that you would bless it to a, a place where it can be used for your honor and glory as well. We thank you for, for blessing these offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we have a slate, and we're going to have Marv and John sanitize their hands and then pass these out to the members. Once you have these, just hang on to them, and we'll go over them and also have a word of prayer and take a little bit of time to fill these out. We will wait to hand them to the center after the prayer for the EBI students, so that will give you a little extra time there if you can multitask. Does everyone have a copy that would like to have a copy? If not, please raise your hand. Okay. So I'm going to go over this just real quickly. 
Myron Hosteller is coming off as our head trustee right now, and so we are we are um, on the slate. We have Dan Kemp and John Overholt. Service committee Bill and Clara are coming off. Thank you for both of you for Myron and for Bill's your faithful service. And we have Fanny Henry and Fanny Ellen Slaybaugh as well as Harley and Orpha Nisley. Sunday evening program Richard and Rhoda will be coming off of that, and it's been a different year for that. And but it's okay. Um, we are hoping to have more Sunday evenings this coming year, but at this point we don't know. For Dan and Edie, it will be either a yes or a no. They are the only ones that have agreed to it. Pleasant View Planning, uh, Mel and Sharon have agreed to go another year. And there again, it was a pretty light load, I believe. Um, for ushers, Henry and Fanny Ellen are coming off. And we have Barry and Debbie Graber, or Jonathan and Katrina Hostetler to vote on. For greeters, LaRonda Bender and Brittany Martin, thank you for all the doors you opened this past year. Very, very good. And we have Jake and Susie, or Norman and Sandy, for that. On the missions committee, Dan Kemp, Dan and Edie will be coming off. And we have Menno Borntrigger, or Jonathan Hostetler. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the faithfulness of those that have served. Thank you, God, for the privilege to be able to do something that is constructive for the local body of believers. And I pray that you would guide and direct us as we look at the names on the right and decide who, um, who you are uh, wanting us to put down. And we know that's a difficult choice to make a lot of times, and so we pray that each person would be qualified and that each person would also be willing to serve in a way that would bring you honor and glory. So I pray that you would guide us in our, in our voice, in our voting this morning, and that you would give us wisdom and direction. We ask and pray in Jesus' name, amen. Take a little bit of time. When you're done, just hang on to those for right now. I think it's both a privilege and a blessing to have young people uh, go to study more about God and to go to a Bible school for that. And I would like to have LaRonda and Brittany, Micah and Rachel and Leah uh, stand, first of all, to your feet and then come on forward. And if you would like to pray with, we're going to have a word of prayer together in the front here not going to make you say anything until you get home, so then we'll know if you learned anything. Um, but if you'd like to join us up here at the front, um, I'll have Marv lead out and uh, Verlin lead out as well because of the being youth. and yeah. any, any family or friends that want to come forward, just come on forward, and then I will bring it to a close.
Father, as I look around and see the youth group here, I thank you for each one. And Lord, especially these five as they're getting ready to go, I pray that you would bless their next three weeks. I know it's the shortest term of the year and the only term that was open for them to even go if they wanted to. And so I pray that it would be a time of, of great uh, spiritual input in the classes they take and also good fellowship with other youth. And I pray, God, that, that as they try to discern how to juggle the time between fellowship and study, that you'd give them that wisdom, and uh, I know it takes a lot of brain power and uh, study, but Lord, may that be a blessing spiritually for them, and I pray that you would bless them as they go, give them a safe trip both ways, a safe round trip, we pray. Let them be a blessing and a good uh, representation of our church. Let them be good peers uh, to those around them, and uh, may they serve you wholeheartedly, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, this morning I too thank you for our youth and Lord for just the energy that they bring to our congregation and Lord I thank you for uh, young people who are willing to go and to uh, give of their time to learn uh, more of you and to learn how to better serve you uh, in the world that we live in. So God I thank you for the five that are going to EBI and God, I pray that you would just bless them and uh, help the studies to go well. God, I pray that you would just give them clear minds. And Lord, this morning I pray especially for Brittany. God, I know that she has other things on her mind right now, but God, I pray that you would just help her to lay that aside right now for the next three weeks and to just focus on you and uh, help her, Lord, to, uh, yeah, that the studies would end the rest as well, God, that, that Lord, that, that they could make new friends. And that would last a lifetime. And so, God, thank you again for this opportunity. Be with them as they travel tomorrow. I give them traveling mercies if it's not against your will. And so, Lord, we just commit them to you. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, too, for the privilege it is to send our youth to Bible school and to know that they will be um, representing our church in a lot of ways. And so I pray that you would give them just a steadfastness in you and direction from you and your Holy Spirit, God, as they go. I pray for Micah. pray that you would guide him in being the only guy going right now from Sunnyside, but that you would just give him a lot of wisdom and direction and guidance. You would be with his sister Leah as well, that she'd be able to see old friends and make new friends, and this would be a good uh, time in her life at EBI, as well as For Rachel returning, I pray that you would bless her in going back and uh, with the intent of spending the rest of the year there as well, that studies would be um, not easy, but with with studying and finding answers that you would guide her in in all of that. Pray for LaRonda, that you would bless her as well, that you would answer questions that she may have, that you would be the one to uh, be so in her life that she would just feel your closeness and being able to fellowship with you and other believers as well. I too pray for Brittany and and Matthew as they will be separated for three weeks, that you would guide them in that, that Brittany would be able to focus on studies that would uh, guide her for the rest of her life. Then I pray for the parents of these youth, that you would be with them and bless them as well for sending and being a Um, just a a role model for you, for them, and uh, just from you to them. And I pray that you would guide and direct each parent as they release their children to go. So I pray that you would guide and direct us now and uh, pray your blessing on each one. And also pray for the, the trips back and forth and time spent there, that you would watch over them for safekeeping as well. We ask and pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you all. We'll take some time for prayer requests. If you have a prayer request this morning, we'd like to give you that opportunity. Our missionaries 
For special consideration and prayer for January are Marvin and Suzanne, involved with Wycliffe, and helping to make so that God's word is understandable for other languages that do not have it. Floyd? Yeah, I guess you said prayer request, but this is a, a praise and a prayer request, I guess. If I can get through this. We had the pri I had the privilege of the last few days spending in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains, which was Norman and, and Dina's wedding. And I just thank God for who he is, for safety and protection. I forget which town we went through, but we went through some pretty big towns. And there was one time that a car cut in front of us, and God spared us from that accident. We had a very good driver. He was very careful. And so I just thank the Lord for that. And on, and on a pair request, Norman and Regina were living together. I mean, that sounds kind of funny, but I mean, that's fine. And, and you know what I mean. Yeah. For many years since, I don't know how long, but I know it was since we've been up here. And she's been going through a very, very tough time. She, t she went down with the bus, and, and the next morning she went with uh, the minister, that full gospel, what's his name, uh, Shroff. Yeah, anyway, he, she went with them to South Carolina, and there's where she's going to spend, we don't know how long. But it was a very dramatic thing to see her go. We've been friends for years. Yes, and so we shared some tears together and just blessed her for going. And I would just ask that you would pray for her, that she doesn't get so discouraged or lose, but that she, but through this experience, that she can be drawn closer to, to God and, and to find new friends. May God okay. bless. She going to Wilderness Camp? Which one is she going to? Which camp is she going to? Fair play. Fair play. Okay, pray for Regina Yoder wants to start some time at Fair Play. Mel? We've asked for prayer for my brother Raymond. Um, it seems like he is getting worse and not better with his uh, breathing. Uh, he's pretty much on a respirator uh, at home and pretty much isolated. We did talk to him um, yesterday or the day before, um, and he's quite upbeat for, um, and his faith is strong. We just ask for the Lord's will to be done and uh, the Lord to undergird him mm -hmm. and, and help him through this time. Okay. Does he have the COVID then? No. no. It's just his. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a nurse in the household that uh, he's got to stay away from because she gets involved, well, get sure. connected with the COVID too often. Um, so it's it's a difficult situation that way. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, I'm afraid if he got the COVID, it would be gone. He'd be gone. But uh, that's one of the reasons we particularly want to be sure. praying for him as well. That's fine. Thank you. Oh, right behind you, Rhoda. There you go. <clears throat> this isn't exactly a prayer request, but I'd just like to call your attention to something on the bulletin board. Uh, my friend Trudy has been coloring uh, scripture verses, and she picked one out especially that she wanted to give to the church here. So this week we came and put it on the bulletin board, and uh, uh, so take a look at it if you think about it. And uh, um, yeah, she hasn't forgotten you, and 
she possibly is listening even right now. And uh, so I'm sure she will appreciate your prayers also. Okay. And uh, if I may, I would just like to write, read a poem. Sure. Um, some of you will remember hearing this from Morris Schwarzenegger. He read it very often uh, at the beginning of the year, and it was a poem that I, it always meant a lot to me, and over the years I have often, uh, often read it at the beginning of the year. But this year it, it just had a, an added dimension to it in meaning um, because of the, the situation, the world situation right now. But uh, I'll just read it for you and I, I'm quite sure some of you will remember hearing Morris read it. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread softly into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. And I just want to put my hand into the hand of God this year. All right. Thank you, Rhoda. And Brittany. Yes, I am going to EBI, which I am really excited about. Um, like Dad said, I've kind of had my mind on other things, but um, I'm really excited to go. And if you want specific prayer requests for me, please pray that I can keep my mind on Bible school. Um, I really want to take advantage of the opportunity to learn and to grow. And so um, I would just really love you to pray for... Um, just peace of mind for me and also rest. Um, I've been having a lot of trouble sleeping lately and so I would yeah, just really want to be able to sleep well and to um, do my best in my studies and in connecting with others. So thank okay. you. Thank you, Brittany. And Maru. Elaine and I want to thank you for the cards you've given us. Many of you have. We didn't give many Christmas cards. You probably didn't get one from us. But we did finally get our calendars, and so I'll put some calendars out in the foyer, and each family can take a calendar, and each youth can take one if you want it. So I think there's three different varieties there, so help yourself. I'm a deer hunter. Can I tell a story? Sure. John's about to preach. Can you put us, uh, James 1.22, I believe it is, on the screen? See if you can find that one. Maybe I ought to just read this story. It's a, who got the deer? A builder, pastor, and professional golfer went deer hunting together. They were all novices but wanted to try it. They were out all day, and toward dusk they spotted a five-point buck at the same time. They each took aim, and three shots were fired at the moving target. The buck went down, so they rushed over to make sure it was dead. It was and they started to discuss who had actually hit it. As they were discussing it, a game warden happened along and asked what the problem was. They told him and he said for them to stand back and he would try to figure it out based on the bullet hole and the rifles they were using. After only a couple minutes, he came to them and said that the pastor was the one who hit the deer. The three wondered how he could figure it out so fast. The warden said that the bullet went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> so, John, you're just about to preach. <clears throat> James 1, 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So uh, don't let it just go in one ear and out the other this morning. So uh, do what it says. All right. We're assuming there was something in between there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's have prayer together. And I would like to remember Marvin and Suzanne. Um, thank you, Frank and Ada, for, for their many years together. I think it would be good to have a prayer of blessing for them. And uh, for Norman Yoder's marriage for Regina Yoder's change of life 
and uh, for Raymond White for healing and for Brittany going to EBI. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, God, that we are serving a God that I believe hears us and moves. And uh, thank you for that. I pray for Marvin and Suzanne as they are bringing the gospel to by in, by taking your word and, and putting it into words of different languages and having worked with the Dietzy people a lot, I pray that you would just continue to guide and direct him, especially in his work. Pray for Norman and his new bride and pray that you would be with them and guide them um, after living all of their lives without being married. I pray that you would help us to to bring two hearts together that could mesh and bring you honor and glory in their marriage. I pray for Regina. She has had big changes and being uprooted from what she is used to. I thank you for her and the special person that she is, the good friend. I pray that you would just be with her and guide her, uh, especially into going into service and that you would give her strength for each day. Pray for Raymond White for healing according to your divine plan and will for his life and uh, pray that he most certainly would be ready to meet his Savior when that time comes. Pray for Brittany, and I thank you for what she shared about being able to sleep, and pray that she would be able to sleep well, that she would be able to focus on her studies, and at the same time, I pray for her and Matthew that they would continue to deepen their relationship with each other, and most certainly with you. So I pray that you would guide and direct each one of these, I thank you for Frank and Ada and their 66 years together and pray that you would bless them in a very special way and all those birthdays that we're looking at for this coming week as well, that they would start their year with you and that you would guide and direct them. And we ask and pray it in Jesus' name, amen. would like to have you hand those papers into the middle now and I'll have Marv pick them up. Can just keep them with him then. If you want to turn to First Thessalonians chapter four, that's what I will be reading. There's a couple of schools of thought in here. I found it helpful to read it in the New King James as well this morning. Um, verse 17, I'm sorry, verse 15, it says, um, We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And it just means that those that, are, that have already passed away will go before we do. And I don't think that's going to matter at all as far as I'm concerned. I'm happy that God has a plan that he's going to carry through with and that he will take care of. Chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. Furthermore then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study 
to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And altogether, the last verse, wherefore comfort one another with these words. John, if you want to come, we'll have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for these words that are comfort to each one of us that believe in Jesus Christ, and I pray that you would bless John with the message that you've laid on his heart, that you would open his mouth and his thoughts, and that you would also open our ears to hear what you would have for us. I pray that you would bless this message, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I, too, want to welcome everyone this morning. Hopefully the won't go in one ear and out the other, all of it. We had um, the other week, you were, <clears throat> I heard some of you talking about seeing the star of Bethlehem. I never got to see that. I didn't. In fact, my wife called me on the way home and reminded me of it, and I had looked, and I didn't see it. I guess I'm just too dense to get it. So I never got to see it, but the other day, or in the first storm we had last week, I uh, was walking on the sidewalks and I hit a, I don't know if you call it black ice or what, but it was icy and slick. And I went down, just right on my back. My head hit the cement. I think it's maybe a little flat in the back, but I was sure I saw the star of Bethlehem. <laughs> Only there was plenty of them. There was more than one star. As it hurt. And immediately I thought of Dan. He talked about that a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, well, he's some of those old, one of those old fellas, and that's why he fell. But I don't know what. I'm not that old, I didn't think. I don't know. Is it anything to do with turning 60 or not? But... So I did get to see the star of Bethlehem, I guess. So it's just more than one. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, this morning I wasn't sure. I thought, you know, starting a new year, shouldn't we talk about something to start the new year? The should have a lot of goals or something, and I know. I'm not a big goal setter, I guess, because you set goals, you break them usually. And so maybe that's why, I don't know, it never really appealed to me that much. Could be losing some weight. Uh, there's a lot of things that could be set. And I could stand some of that. But um, So this morning, I, um, my title is simply, Do You Have Your House in Order? It may be kind of simple, but that's what I'll call it. And I'd like to talk about the rapture. Is, uh, the scripture that Floyd read it's pretty obvious. And I'm not sure what do you call that. You can't, it's not the second coming. Is it just the coming of the Lord? Um, I guess it's the rapture. Um, that's all it is. Uh, the second time, Jesus is going to come down and his feet will touch the earth. This time, he won't. It'll be on, in the clouds. And I know there's a lot of different opinions or ideas on <clears throat> the rapture or how that will all be. 
And I guess this morning, I just want you to know I don't have all the answers. I'm not a scholar by any means. Uh, I just simply take Scripture what I understand it, and that may be very limited, but I know there's a lot of different thoughts on it. So maybe we can't agree on all the thoughts, but let's agree that the Bible is true. It's going to happen. The Bible says it will, and it's going to, whether you think so or not, or how you think it's going to happen. And it doesn't really matter how. <clears throat> it is, but the Bible says it. it. It will. And I don't know if any of you, some of you I know follow the news more closely than others, and I guess I would recommend don't listen to the mainstream news media because it's mostly untruth. But there are sources out there that are a lot more truth to them that you can believe more so. And I've been kind of, I guess I'm one, I'm curious enough, I want to know what's happening. So we've been following a lot of it, and, but not necessarily the mainstream, because I know it's not true. But we are... L living in some very uncertain times. You know, here we are, January 3rd, and we don't know who our next president's going to be. Still don't. Supposedly, in a few days, we will find out. Supposedly. Don't be surprised if you don't. Because it's not over. So I know we need to be careful what we listen to, but um, there's a lot of things going on. And I hear people say and things like, "I'm not sure I want to do this or that because it sounds like it seems like Jesus is going to be coming back soon. Should we do it?" The other day I heard a person say they had just bought a house and they was wondering if they should have. Should we buy a house right now? I mean, it's, what's the point of going through that if Jesus is coming soon anyway? <laughs> we can say that. But you know what? Jesus said, work till I come. Occupy till I come. And it's, we all know that there's been times when they sit out on the hill and try to wait. Just about always, those things end up in a disaster. And it's not good. Don't do it. We need to remember that. Jesus said, just keep working until I come. Stay occupied. And there's all kinds of things out there. It's like, you know, there's talk of the Great Reset. I don't know if you know anything about the Great Reset or not, but it's enough to scare you. Um, simply the New World Order is what it is. And own nothing... And be happy about it. That's just the idea of it. Own nothing and be happy. So there's all kinds of stuff. But I also just noticed, I read an article on CBN, Christian Broadcasting News, that more than 20,000 Jews returned back to Israel in 2020. That's prophecy being fulfilled. So there's all kinds of things happening we're getting closer and closer. The dots are connecting, I think. But I believe most of all, it was in, we're in a real spiritual battle also. We really are. Um, I don't know how many of you listened to this Amir. I won't even try to say his last name. I uh, can't say it anyway. It's, he's a Jew, Messianic Jew, and I know some of you listen to him. I've talked to some of you about it. And he has some really good thoughts on this. He, uh, he's from Israel. He lives there. And yet, he's a very learned man, and, and I think he's probably as on track as a lot of them are. I don't agree with quite everything he says or where he comes from. But, but he was asked the question, and he teaches a whole, uh, just a bunch of different things. And he has a lot of teaching on 
the return of Christ, the, the rapture. And he was asked the question, uh, what is, has to happen yet before the rapture can happen? What has to happen yet? And his answer was nothing. The table is set. We would say in German, the dish is krischt. It's set, ready to happen, is what he says. Now that's his thought on it. That's a man's thought. But he does know a whole lot more about it than I do. I know that. So there's so much going on, and all that stuff, I mean, you could go on and on with all the bad things that are happening. And you have to be careful. You can't just stay there because it gets you down. And there's so many different things out there. You have to be careful what you listen to, too. Don't just listen to anything out there. But I believe the table is set. It really is. Matthew 5.13 says, You are the salt of the earth. And it goes on and says, We are the light of the world. And we as Christians, we are that salt and light. And if we don't do it, the world isn't going to, evil is not going to be opposed. And it is simply to oppose evil. And we dare not forget 1 John 4, 4 talks about greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And that's simply the Christians. We have Christ within us is greater than what's out there in the world is Satan. And Jesus is greater. He will always be greater. Never will it be the other way. But back to setting goals. I did set one goal that I kind of would like to, and I've been trying to do it, and I have been doing it. And that is simply being more vocal for Jesus. I don't know. It, I like it, to do it when I go through a checkout. Uh, through a store and the other week oh this was back in December already I was at Menards and I got some material out back so I had to go out back to get my stuff and as I, I had gone out and as I was leaving he had his paper and I had quite a bit of stuff he was checking it and making sure I had everything right and as he got my paper I just told him now don't forget Jesus loves you and this old guy, I had known him, seen him a long time. He's been working there for quite a time. He didn't say a word. He just took the paper and kept looking at it. And I thought, well, surely he heard me, but he didn't respond. So I said, did you hear me? He was, yeah, I heard you. <laughs> so <laughs> he did not like what I had to say. And I thought, okay, I'll be coming back again. I'll be back. So... He didn't appreciate it the greatest. So then from there, I went over to Aldi. And as I was going through the checkout, I actually got some groceries for Lily. I'm pretty good at shopping for her. So I went through, as I was going through the checkout, this young gal there, and I said, um, she was with small talk there, and I said, so, say, have you been talking to Jesus lately? And uh, she kind of stopped. You know, they go through their stuff so fast, and, she actually stopped a little bit, and she said, uh, yes, in fact, I have. She said, hmm, good, praise the Lord. So I said, you know, Jesus is coming soon, I think. And she said, you know what? I believe you're right, she said. So I hit one there. She was with me. I thought that was cool, but then here just lately, I was up at another place and asked her that question, and she... Uh, she admitted she doesn't. And I said, well, it's about time you start. And she didn't. Uh, she says, yeah, she thought she should, but she didn't. So there's all kinds of things. Now, that's just one thing that I, you started using. Have you been talking to Jesus? It, it makes them think, and they get, get some talking. And I thought later, you know, if you are somewhere and you hear some unusual statement made, what do you do? You start pondering that thought. 
And you may even wake up at night and think, what did that guy mean by that? Why did he say that? I don't know. Those are things we don't know. God can use that, but I believe it's something to make them think. And they will ponder it. I really believe they will because they don't hear that from very many customers coming through. And so it's something that they will stop and think about and ponder, I believe. So I think that's, uh, and that's just one thing. You can think of something different that's probably way more effective, and that's great. But I think it's a good, good thing to do to just remind people. Um, and I had to think also back in 1988. I don't know how many of you remember that. I know some of you weren't around. But then there was a, re- uh, um, a guy that came up with 88 reasons for Christ to return or Christ's return. And you probably remember that. He actually wrote a book on it. And then later, when it didn't happen, then he wrote another one and made a little bit more money. But anyhow... <laughs> It's just when a guy sets a date, don't pay attention. And I remember I was a young married man at that time, and it kind of shook me a little bit. I was pretty concerned about it, and I said something to an older man in our church, and he kind of kindly reprimanded me. He says, you don't listen to that kind of stuff. He says that he was an old man then, and he said, I've heard those things all my life, you know, different guys would say, and it's not true. When somebody sets a date, you know it's not right because what does the Bible say? Is we don't know. Nobody knows. Not even Jesus himself. And it's the Father that knows. And so I thought, I mean, but I still remember where I was working that day. It was a date in September. I forget which day. But I actually remember, I told Lily, I remember where I was working that day. And uh, it, it mid, did make an impression on me. And, and I know we have at least one man in Kelowna today that's a Christian because of that. So there is good things come from it. This guy turned to the Lord. Most of you would know him. But he became a believer. And I think that is... So there, there's some good. In what the devil means for bad, there's a, usually something good comes out of it. Can be used and made out of, good out of it. Um, the word rapture is not even in the Bible, and I'm sure you knew that, but the, rapture is, the word rapture is taken from the Latin, rapio or something like that, for the, the word caught up is what it means. Caught up or snatched up. Um, is where rapture comes from, the Latin. And it was used in Philip, for Philip in Acts 8.39 when Philip was in King James says he was caught away. Not say up. Uh, it doesn't say up. He says caught away. And I don't know. I've heard uh, some of the commentaries that I was looking at made it sound like he might have been just taken away and not up. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But he was taken away either way. Second Corinthians twelve two and four that two to four is of Paul being caught up, and he was taken up. Uh, and uh, if you read that account, also Revelation twelve five of the male child that was caught up and taken taken away. And uh, so it is real. It, they did this; these things happened. So I would like to, and I'm going to be using this morning, I uh, will be reading or using the New American Standard, which is a little bit different than the King James, but I thought it made it a little more clear, is why I'm read it, using that. And thanks, Floyd, for reading the, the chapter. But I'd like to pick it up in verse 13. And I like how the first part of this chapter, Paul was encouraging uh, the people and just uh, encouraging them on to live their faith in their Christian life. And then in verse 13, he says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as do those who have no hope. And those who are asleep. 
And a lot of this stuff, I mean, it sounds like, how can this be? How can all these be true? But it is simply the Christians or believers who have died are asleep. Now, this is not a soul sleep. It's, I guess you would call it a body sleep. It describes the, the believers or the, the Christians who have died are as asleep. And then he says there at the end, and, and that you may not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. And I so well remember here a couple, a number of years ago, we had a, a, a guy here down at one of our resident, our tenants that died and his wife was left behind and they weren't believers. And it was made very clear that time to Lily and me that how, what this, I had to think of this very much at that time. She simply didn't know how to grieve. They went to alcohol. They went to, she ended up on drugs. She simply didn't, she just fell apart. She didn't know how to do it. She didn't know how to grieve. And we tried to walk through that with her and ended up, she disappeared. We never did know where she went for sure. And I don't know today. We heard rumor that she was on drugs so high that she didn't know anybody. But that's the unbeliever. And he's saying, we don't have to. We don't have to grieve like those. We can grieve with the hope of Jesus. And that, that's what carries us through those hard times. Our word cemetery comes from a Greek word meaning sleeping place. I learned that in studying this in some of the commentaries. I never knew that that's where the word cemetery comes from, is a sleeping place. But we as believers do not have to grieve like those who have no hope. And I'm blessed with that. Verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. And simply the basis of, of the believer's hope is in the resurrection of Christ. Just as surely as we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we can believe that those who have fallen asleep in Jesus will be part of that second coming, of his coming again, I mean. You know, we may say, how can that all that be? But we believe that Jesus died and rose again, don't we? It's not even, we don't even question that really. So they will be coming, the believers will be coming again with Jesus. And we're saying, how can this be? Their bodies are all lying in the grave. They, they've deteriorated. Um, the answer is in verses 15 through 17. Verse 15, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. Um, precede those who have fallen asleep. And I had to wonder, how did Paul know all this? How did he know this? Well, he's saying, by the word of the Lord. He says, by the word of the Lord. So that's how he knew. I believe it was a direct revelation from the Lord to, to Paul. That's how he knew that. And you know, just as we follow Jesus here on earth is how we're going to follow him through up through the clouds. And I don't know how that's all going to be. You know, if we don't follow Jesus on earth, we're not going to follow him when he steps out on that cloud. So it's pretty important that we follow him. You know, and I see a lot of this half-hearted following, halfway following, you might say. Well, I tell you, when that trumpet sounds, it's not going to be halfway following him. You're either going to follow him or you won't. And if you don't follow him, you've missed the boat. It's just the way it is. 
So it's important that we follow Jesus correctly on earth so that we can follow him in the air. Verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Wow. The Lord himself will descend. And I don't know, I always imagine when I see a big heavy cloud or something up there, will I someday see Jesus step out on that cloud? You know, that's, that's exciting, you know, to know that it's going to happen sometime. And there's some disagreement in whose voice. Is Jesus going to sound the voice or is it the archangel? I don't know. It says with the voice, well, let me just say the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. He says he is going to make the shout, it sounds like, but then it says with the voice of the archangel. So I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter, but I don't think we're going to miss it. Everybody's going to see that and hear that. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And so we who are alive will probably see all that. It's going to be amazing. Verse 17, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. You know, I just can't imagine. I, I don't know what that's going to be like. Um, caught up um, and taken up through... <laughs> We're going to have to have different bodies or something, yet we're in the body the way it sounds. So I don't know. But I had to think, you know, those people that have a hard time believing first, uh, Genesis 1 and 2, what are they going to make out of this one? If you can't believe for uh, Genesis 1 and 2 of the creation, and when God will recreate millions of bodies from dust, according to what's going to happen. Because these people have been dead for years and years. They're going to be bodies again. They're going to be going. And I don't know what those people are going to think. If they can't believe the first creation, it's going to be really hard for this one. But those people obviously aren't going to be going up there unless they make a quick commitment before that happens. But it's going to be an exciting time, nevertheless. I, and then I like what he says in verse 18. Then he says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another. And he says, we'll be with the Lord always, forever. Uh, we can't comfort each other much better than that, can we? I think that's a blessing. You know, and who can tell of the joy and blessing that is included in these words? It's just it's indescribable, or you can't hardly describe it any better than that. I'd like to, in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, I'd like to read a section of that. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall, we, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 
be steadfast, is I guess all I can say is be steadfast and be unmovable. You know, and I thought of all this stuff that is going on in our world today and the fact of what could be coming soon is just a little bit scary. I don't know. If you think about it as if the rapture happens, does that sound a little scary to you? To a lot of people it does. And all the things that are happening in our world around us is what's happening today in our world around us. But I think it is a little scary. To me it is too. But you know, anytime we have any unknown uh, in our life, it tends to be a little scary. You don't know for sure what's on the other side of that hill. And there's a lot of things that we face in life that are just a little scary because it's unknown to us. But I like to think of our, as, as far as the rapture, it's what's on the other side um, is the not scary part. It may be a little scary to get there. I don't know. It's going to be in a twinkling of an eye. You won't have much time to get scared, which is good. A little bit like a roller coaster ride. You go up over that hump and you're scared to death and all of a sudden it's, you're down and over. But this is going to be a ride of our life that we've never had. So I think all this is, is, um, can be very encouraging, but it can also be dis- discouraging. Uh, and I know, I don't know, I remember being a young person and we were about to get married and I'd hear people talk about this stuff. I wanted to get married first. So I know what you're thinking, Matt and Brittany, I think. You think, I want to get married first. Well, it's true, you probably do. And I'm not saying it's going to happen before that, I don't know. You know, I, I just want to make sure this morning that you know I'm not setting a date because I absolutely don't know. Jesus didn't know. The angels didn't know. But I do believe we are closer than we've ever been before uh, with everything that's happening. Uh, the Middle East, of what's going on over there, it's got to be closer. Because things are, the dots are connecting. Um, Luke 21, I think it's about verse 27, talks about our redemption draweth nigh. You know, and it's a, that's a promise. Our redemption draweth nigh. Mark 13.32 says that the day and hour knoweth no man, not even the angels, neither the Son, but the Father. It's only God that knows You know, and the thoughts of the Lord's coming do not cause terror for the believer. It shouldn't. It is the hope that thrills and cheers and comforts us. But for the unbeliever, I believe it is a terror. Um, When you don't have that promise, when you don't have that assurance that where you are going, it's going to be scary. I mean, real scary. And I thank God that that I know who my Redeemer is. That's Jesus Christ. And Philippians 3.20 reminds us that our citizenship is not on this earth. Don't forget that. It is not here. Uh, If you're a believer, it is not here. You know, and I told Lily, I said, what if God would give us one more day of grace? You know, and the Bible says one day is a thousand years. It could be a thousand years away. could be 500 years. I don't know. Maybe he'll give us 15 minutes. That could be 200 and some years. You know, we don't know those things. And I'm just saying, I don't know when this time will be. But I do know and I'm convinced this morning it's going to happen. Because it's in the Bible. We have it. We got something that the unbeliever doesn't. And we don't have to be scared to death about it. Yes, a little scary maybe, 
We don't know what all is going to happen. I would like to do a sermon on 2 Thessalonians, about chapter uh, 2, I think. And it talks about the restrainer there. And read that. Who is that restrainer? You know, it's some interesting things. I don't know, maybe the Lord will take me there for the next time. I'm not sure yet. But there's a lot of... A lot of things to think about, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's good to think about those things. We can't dwell on it. We need to continue and be occupied. Jesus said we should, so stay busy. Don't sit on the hill and wait, because you're going to get in trouble. Uh, it doesn't work that way. But I have one verse I'd like to end up at with in John 14. Verse 27, you all know this verse. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, I think the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you have Jesus within and you are filled with Jesus and his love. If you don't have that this morning, you are going to be scared. You're going to be unsettled. I can pretty much assure you of that. I've been there. I know how it works. When you don't have that peace, you don't have peace within. When you don't have Jesus, you're going to have a scary road ahead of you. So I would just encourage you, if you don't know for sure this morning that you are saved and you have Jesus within here, and you are sure that where you're going, talk to someone or get help. Make sure you know. So you can have this peace that I just read about here. Jesus is the only one that can give you that. And I thank God that we have that peace at our hands. It's at our taking. We can have it. So I hope I didn't discourage you this morning, but encouraged us to continue striving, to pushing, opposing evil. That's what God wants us to do. We can't do it on our own. But greater is he that is in here than he that is out there in the world. That's Jesus, our Savior. Let us pray. Father, this morning, again, I thank you for being our Father and being our God. And that we have that assurance and that peace through salvation. And I know we're looking for that day when you return and take us out of our misery here on earth, I guess. But Lord, we we know that we kind of all want a little more time, seems like. But we know your time is what's going to matter. And it's all dependent on that. So God, this morning, help us as we strive to serve you that we would not get discouraged but continue to comfort one another with the words that Paul has spoken. Help us, Lord, to do that. I just, again, commit all this to you and pray and ask this in the name of Jesus that you would bless your church, your body. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'll turn it over to the Sunday School Superintendent. Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday School Hour. The teachers and superintendent for the basement can be dismissed. Uh, This morning's lesson is titled, Fools for Christ's Sake. Uh, Our memory selection is 1 Corinthians 4, verse 9. For I think that God hath set forth uh, us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. Uh, The lesson focus is, to fulfill our stewardship of the gospel as convincing testimonies of Christ to the world around us. 
And um, today's lesson just kind of takes another look at how, as Christians, um, sometimes we're called to do things that to the world look foolish, um, but in God's kingdom, uh, it's, it's wisdom to do those things. Um, the children can be dismissed for the basement. I'd like to read a passage in 2 Corinthians 1, verses 1 through 12. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is at Corinth, with all the sound, with all the saints who are in the whole of Achaia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that you, that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia, for we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. You also must help us by prayer, so that many will be thanked will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. For our boast is this, the testimony of our conscience, that we behaved in the world with simpli- excuse me, with simplicity and godly sincerity, not by earthly wisdom, but by the grace of God, and supremely so toward you. Um, I like this passage uh, as it goes with today's lesson, just in how it talks of being comforted by God, and I think... Um, I guess it's, it's a comforting passage in regards with how um, today's lesson talks about being fools for Christ's sake. And so that no matter, we can take heart knowing that no matter what that entails, um, God is with us and um, he cares about us. So with that, you can be dismissed. <clears throat>